I'm Jeff Alpin, the Big Game Hunter. I'm the head coach for Job Search Coaching HQ.com. That's a site where I've curated information that you can watch, listen to, or read. It's going to help you find work more quickly. And I'm a career coach. I worked in executive search for many, many years, filled a ton of positions, and in doing so, unfortunately, I had the experience of having to tell people after a final interview that they had been turned down. And over the years, I compiled a, a number of uh, faux pas, mistakes that people made at final interviews. And I'll just simply say before I go further, if you'd like me to prepare you for an interview or a final interview so that you can walk in with your questions answered and as well prepared as you can possibly be, visit my website, thebiggamehunter.us. Use one of the tabs on top that's going to direct you to a place where you can hire me to get, uh, where you can hire me to work with you for this. Okay, and if you're earlier in your search, I'd love to work with you throughout the search as well. That information is also available there. So, here are a few of the mistakes that people have made over the years, and I've got a section specifically for video interviews. So hang in there because if you've got a video interview, you know this is. This is going to be important to you, okay? So the first thing is being inadequately prepared, including not researching the interviewer. Now, inadequately prepared is really pretty simple to avoid. And the simplest way is take a little quiet time and reflect on the interviews that you've done previously. What have they told you or not told you about the role? How have you answered particular questions? What stories have you told? And just review those so that this way your answers are congruent. And ideally, you want to have one or two additional stories that illustrate your successes as part of your presentation. Another thing people have done is they just walked in, if they're being represented by a recruiter, contingency or executive search, they haven't really checked in with the firm to get their views on the person that they'll be meeting with. They may have a longer relationship with this person than just simply reading a LinkedIn profile. They may actually have worked with this person for years and you might get some texture about what they're like and how to present your ideas to them well. Another mistake people make is not being punctual, or if they are late for circumstances outside of your control, not acknowledging, apologizing, or explaining the lateness. You know, I, I've had clients tell me for years that, you know, they loathe, I really use that word specifically, they loathe when people just walk in 20 minutes late and are coming for the interview and it's as though nothing happened. They're human beings on the other side of the desk. And they're there to evaluate and assess you and everything you do or don't do sends a message to them. So if you are late, you know, traffic, trains, whatever it is, just make a quick apology and, and say something along the lines of, I'm so sorry I'm late. You know, traffic, you know, there was an accident along the way. I called in. I don't know if you got the message, but I tried to hit you know, to let you know I was going to be late. I'm very sorry. Not a normal occurrence for me. Thank you. Uh, so that's another mistake people make. Uh, one that has always annoyed me when people uh, have done it with me is asking obvious questions that have already been answered or could be answered on the website. What kind of value are, are you getting from answering, asking something obvious. Um, so it, it's a dumb mistake. You want to have some textured, detailed questions. Um, and the, con you know, the, the other side of this is not having quality questions prepared. So that there have been things that have surfaced in the course of, uh, of your interviews that are going to suggest follow-up. Or, you know, here's one of my classics, and, uh, and I mentioned this to a, a CMO candidate I was representing, or I shouldn't say represent, I've been coaching recently. You know, uh, I've, I've spoken with so-and-so, and they've given me a sense of what I need to look out for in order to adequately serve them. But I want to make sure that your preferences, your needs, your wishes are attended to as well. You know, over the first year, 
you know, we'll, we'll actually, let me back up for a second. Over the first 30, 60, 90 days, what are your expectations for me? And that becomes the starting point as to what your hiring manager or the executive for the function thinks about what you should be working on and accomplishing. And then from there, you know, if we were sitting down a year from now, what would success look like? You know, how would I demonstrate to you that I was a great hire? That basically, again, sends the message that you want to be a successful individual and that you want to get their input on what success looks like. Another mistake people make is talking about money prematurely or not being prepared to discuss salary at all. So it's like they walk in and they know that this subject could come up. The firm is interested enough to bring them back for a final interview. Always assume that there's someone else or two other people that you're competing with. And if you're not prepared to discuss compensation, you know, you're making a mistake because if there's trying to get that information from you. They don't want you to go home and think about it and then get back to them. So, you know, I'll just simply say that you have to be prepared with that. A uh, bad body language. Now, I'm on camera, and this would be certainly true in a camera situation, like I'll cover a little bit later. But if you sat back in the chair and, and made it seem like you were uncomfortable or looked like a slob, you know, obviously a mistake <laughs> that you could make. A long-winded rambling answer. 45 seconds is the correct length of time, tops for most answers. And if you could do it in 30 seconds, that works well. I'll simply say, if you don't believe me, take out your phone, start the timer, and then start to talk to your wife, husband, partner, or anyone else. And just see how long 30 seconds is and how long 45 seconds is. Babble if you need to, but you'll discover that 30 seconds is a long time, as is 45. Now, let's start to get into a couple of other things. Oh, almost forgot. You don't post about the interview and what happened on social media, okay? <laughs> hey, I had a final interview with so-and-so at such-and-such. I think it went great. Or, oh, man, I blew that one. Don't post that. <laughs> Please, okay? Now, when you're going to be on camera, I, I want to remind you of a couple of specific things. Number one is do a reboot of your system prior to the interview so everything is fresh and the likelihood of your, your lips and your words not being in sync are minimized. Uh, check your connection. Check your camera. You want to make sure that the visual is, is as high def as possible and you present well. See where your eyes meet the camera. You don't necessarily have to look at it like I'm doing right now. You can look off to a side and still suggest that you're making eye contact. And that's really what you want to be doing. You also want to, um, you know, with some of the video conferencing services, they want you to you know, introduce yourself by name to the individual and don't be a jerk and come out with some you know, ridiculous name for yourself. Like, you know, I'll simply say, if I want to introduce myself as coach, obviously I've got the hat on for that, but I wouldn't type that in as the way I introduce myself to the person interviewing me, right? It would just be Jeff Altman. So keep it simple. Okay. And lastly, minimize the possibility of distractions. Now, if you live in a household with other people, try and get them set up in a way that they're not going to be a distraction. You don't want to be the next YouTube star with, you know, the kids walking in on the interview and uh, embarrassing you as happened to a, a a reporter on the BBC who was being interviewed for a story and suddenly the first kid walks in and then the baby, you know, it, I forget what they're called, but it's, it's like a, um, it's almost like a, a life preserver with wheels, <laughs> you know, starts to walk in and then mom is pulling the kids out. And this is all on camera on the BBC. So you don't want to be the next YouTube sensation. I saw one video had 25 million views. Another one had nine and a half million views. You don't want to be that person, do you? All you want to do is present yourself effectively and powerfully. You want to be able to get them to make the offer to you, and you want to be in the position where you're deciding. 
I want to repeat that. You want to be in the position where you're deciding and circumstances are not making it easy for them to turn you down. So I hope you found this helpful. Again, if you're interested in my coaching, you reach out. My website, again, is TheBigGameHunter.us. Uh, there are tabs on the top. And by the way, if you'd like to connect on LinkedIn, send a connection request to me at LinkedIn.com forward slash IN forward slash TheBigGameHunter. Mention that you saw this video. I'd love to know that people have watched it and a bit of help. Hope you have a great day. Take care.